Hello and welcome once again to this Red Gaming Tech video of myself, Amata, where as always I'm here with the latest news from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. I hope you're all looking forward to a lovely, relaxing weekend, and we've got some pretty nice news to kick off this Friday night, starting off with Threadripper and the STRX40. So what we have this time around is the pin layout for both the TR4 sockets and STRX4 sockets have been detailed by HW Battle. And of course you can find a link to their article in the description below this video. So again, they have compiled a full configuration map for the pins of the two sockets. So Basically, looking at the pins, which I'll go through in a moment, there is not going to be any kind of compatibility with the older TR4 socket-based CPUs. Even if the socket itself seems the same, you'll see what you mean, what I mean, sorry, with the pin layout. So on the STRX4, uh, which you should be seeing on screen, you'll see that a lot of pins that were previously unused by the TR socket have actually been enabled. And you can see the huge difference between this and the TR4 SP3 socket, excuse me, which of course was on the first and second generation Threadripper. So it becomes a lot clearer here why we are just not going to see any backwards compatibility here when you're talking about going from first to second gen on the TR4 to the STRX4. So, want more information or just want to give the source article a read? Unfortunately, it's not in English, so just keep in mind that you'll need your Google Translate most likely. But regardless, it is going to be linked for you in the description below this video, as I've already said. But that's not the only AMD thing I have for you today. No, no, no. We actually have a Athlon Gold benchmark which is leaked. So what we have here is a Geekbench database listing which has been spotted on the internets. And this is a submission from a HP 17-CA2XXX laptop which has basically given a bunch of details on an AMD Athlon Gold 3150U processor which is being listed as a Raven Ridge processor. In terms of the specifications, we can see a 2-core 4-thread CPU and Radeon graphics. Most likely, given that this is Raven Ridge, we are probably looking at Vega here. But we also see a 2.4 GHz base frequency with a 3.3 GHz boost, a 512KB L2 cache per core, and 4 megs shared L3 cache. As for the actual score, well, we see a single core score of 3,559 and the multi-core comes in at 7,336. So, this ranks in pretty nicely, slots in pretty comfortably with other entry-level dual-core processors from this particular generation. So this does raise questions, are we to expect more in this particular lineup of SKUs? Is there going to be an Athlon Silver, for instance, or maybe even an Athlon Bronze? I mean, we're probably not going to be seeing Bronze, I'm being a little silly when I say that, but I would not be surprised to see an Athlon Silver, and would not be surprised to see a new lower power architecture in the near future, but regardless, still nice to see that we are seeing AMD kind of stuff out their entry level notebook CPUs or APUs to be more specific side of things with Athlon Gold. But we're going to move over from AMD to their rivals NVIDIA as we have a little something for Ampere up first. So according to an article from 3dcenter.org, which of course again will be linked in the description below this video, NVIDIA has reportedly codenamed a future GPU architecture Hopper in honour of Grace Hopper, who is a very important computer scientist who invented one of the first linkers and also programmed the Harvard Mark I computer that uh, aided the American war effort in World War II. So this is all thanks to a Twitter user by the name of PT7Kimi, hopefully I pronounced that anywhere near correctly, and basically they've just tweeted the code name and apparently we're also going to be a key NVIDIA product design change here as well. So the tweets have since been deleted, but this was not before the keen-eyed folks over at 3dcenter.org managed to report on them. So what is Hopper, I hear you ask? Well, it is reportedly going to be the successor to Ampere. And there is even some rumours regarding the architecture for this particular um, graphics card iteration. We're going to be seeing multi-chip module GPU packages, which are packages with multiple GPU dies. 
Now, NVIDIA does currently use this technology in its Tesla family of compute accelerators or the Quadro GPUs. And we don't really ever see this on our end, like the GeForce end or the RTX end or anything like that. So it would be very interesting to see this in Hopper. Perhaps it would only be in like the data center cards for this particular generation. It's not going to be in the gaming level cards. Or we could see some of that technology trickle down to uh, the more average consumer. But it's interesting to see that information about Hopper, the alleged successor to Ampere, already leaking out onto the internet, considering we know basically nothing other than rumours and what's been said by various sources regarding Ampere. Obviously, it's not going to be that long before we finally learn a little bit about Ampere, at least. I'm fully expecting a reveal from NVIDIA and like GTC, and obviously CES 2020 is going to be huge for both NVIDIA and AMD. But speaking of NVIDIA, we have some financial results for them that have been announced for the third quarter of the fiscal year 2020. And yes, I know fiscal years and quarters are weird. What do you want? <laughs> it's just how NVIDIA works out their, their fiscal years. Um, but what they have reported is again, revenue for the third quarter, which ended October 27th, 2019. And what we saw is $3.01 billion compared with $3.18 billion a year previous. But compared to the previous quarter, we did see an increase as they saw last quarter, 2.58 billion. So a nice increase from last quarter. And when it comes to GAAP earnings per diluted share, for the quarter, they were $1, $1 excuse me, 45 compared to $1.97 a year ago and 90 cents in the previous quarter. And we're also expecting to see the fourth quarter of 2020 to be pretty impressive. Their revenue is expected to be 2.95 billion plus or minus 2%. They're expecting strong growth in the data center and they're expecting this to kind of help cushion things a little bit as of course they are expecting a seasonal decline in GeForce, Notebook GPUs and SoC modules for gaming platforms. Now I do have a bit of a statement here from Jensen Huang, of course is the CEO of NVIDIA, and he said, quote, our gaming business and demand from hyperscale customers powered Q3's results. The realism of computer graphics is taking a giant leap forward with NVIDIA RTX. This quarter, we have laid the foundation for where, for where AI will ultimately make the greatest impact. We extended our reach beyond the cloud to the edge where GPU accelerated 5G, AI and IoT will revolutionize the world's largest industries. We see strong data center growth ahead, driven by the rise of conversational AI and inference. So the TLDR of quarter over quarter and year over year, we see revenue up 17%, um, gross margin is up 380 BBPS, this is quarter over quarter by the way, operating expenses up 2%, operating income up 62%, net income up 63%, and diluted earnings per share up 61%. As for year over year, revenue is down 5%. Gross margin is up 320 BBPS, operating expenses is up 15%, operating income is down 12%, net income is down 27%, and diluted earnings per share is down 26%. So they are improving versus last quarter, but they are suffering a bit versus last year. And they are expecting that again to kind of continue because once again, they're expecting the data center, or fingers crossed, <laughs> hoping the data center kind of cushions the blow a little bit as we see that expected decline in GeForce, as I've already said. So let's move on to our final topic for today, which is something really interesting, I feel, because, you know, Paul and I talk a lot about how important competition is. You know, AMD being so competitive with Ryzen has really woken Intel up and they have pushed out some pretty decent products because they're like, oh, oh damn, we need to actually, you know, try and keep our position here. And we have a new player coming onto the field as former Apple chip executives have launched a startup to take on both AMD and Intel in the data center. Now, another thing I harp on a lot about is how important the data center is for Intel and AMD. You know, that's why the gains that AMD have made in the data center are so hugely important for the company and such a big sting for Intel. So what we have is a company called Nuvia, which is launched by John Bruno, Manu Galati, and Gerard Williams III. And they have announced they have raised $53 million in funding to help expand their company to around 100 employees by the end of the year. And in an interview with Reuters, they said that the data center area is ripe for innovation and advancement. 
And at least according to Patrick Moorhead, an analyst at More Insights and Strategies, they could actually be onto something. And he said, quote, I've been in around semiconductor companies for 30 years. There are never any guarantees, but one thread that I've seen is that the most successful chip companies have rock star architects and developers. So the full interview is rather lengthy, unsurprisingly. You can find the full thing linked in the description below this video. But I'm definitely interested to see what they put out. Now, again, this is for data center. This is not really intended for you or I, but they have the potentiality to really upset the market because also a key thing to keep in mind here is that one of the key investors of Nuvia is actually Dell, which is one of Intel's biggest customers. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that Dell is, you know, kicking Intel off its front porch and using Nuvia instead. It's just that they're interested and they could potentially be like, okay, we'll use your chips as well, or maybe they could overtake Intel. You know, anything is possible, but it's going to be one to watch for sure. And again, you can find the full Reuters interview in the description below this video. So that is me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, words cannot be said how much your support really does mean to both myself and Paul. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you both have you all have, sorry, excuse me, a lovely weekend. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.